Gray, Callum Kennedy, kicking off this week's edition of the Sounds of Scotland with Andy Mike. You're in tune with the Tartan Loon, bringing music and smiles across the miles. Hopefully you're going to stick with me for the next two hours for the very best in hookter chookter music for the land of hills and heather. This week on the show we got a guest, Ronnie Ross. Is going to, I'm going to be chatting to Ronnie a little bit later on. Ronnie Ross, all the way from Inverness, out with a brand spanking new CD, The Land That I Love. So we're going to be talking to Ronnie, playing some of his music. But in the meantime, talking of Inverness, where Ronnie comes from, here's Andy. Andy Stewart and the Song of Inverness. Well, as I said earlier, I'm going to have Ronnie Ross on the show in a few minutes on the telephone all the way from Scotland out with a brand new CD. It's simply called The Land That I Love. Here's Ronnie Ross and The Legend of Scotland. They came from the hills from the far away sky. They came from the moorland where the lonely curlew cries To follow the pibroch as they did in days gone by When they fought for the legend that was Wallace They have gone from the mountains like the snow in summer sun They have gone from the valleys where the crystal rivers run But their names will be remembered for they live in the legend that is Scotland. From the highlands and lowlands, from every button den, came the pride of the clansmen who would ne'er return again. For the sorrow of Culloden still lingers in the wind when they died for the legend that was they have gone from the mountains like the snow and summer sun They have gone from the valleys where the crystal rivers run But their names will be remembered and whispered in the wind For they live in the legend that is Scotland It old folk new foe, at home or far afield, be it Flanders or Alamein, the tyrant's fate is sealed. We will stand by the lion and the cross of freedom's shield, we will die for the legend that is Scotland. They have gone from the mountains like the snow and summer sun. They have gone from the valleys where the crystal rivers run. But their names will be remembered and whispered in the wind. For they live in the legend that is Scotland. Yes, they live in the legend that is Scotland. Ronnie Ross and the legend of Scotland and, uh, and he certainly is a legend of Scotland and on the other end of the telephone all the way from Inverness is Ronnie Ross. Hello Ronnie. Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing smashing. It's great to speak to you. Well, thanks for staying up late tonight. Now it's, uh, what, just after half past twelve at night with you? It is, well, it's about twenty to one. So uh, you're sitting in your pyjamas talking tonight, are you? I am in my pyjamas. It's it. I don't want to paint that picture, though, Andy. I see. Well, you didn't want to be in your pyjamas here in Canada tonight because it's like something off a Christmas card looking at the studio window. The snow is just fluttering down. And really? The, the winter has just arrived. All right. Well, we, we've been very lucky this last uh, few weeks. It's been relatively mild for this time of year, and uh, although we're getting frost, we're not having any snow or anything at the moment. There's been very little over in this part of the world as well. I kind of had a wee, a wee bit before Christmas, and then we had a green Christmas, and then it's uh, kind of been my roll on global warming. I can live with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, super uh, to chat with you tonight. Now, you're out with a new CD, uh, yes. the, the Land That I Love. Tell us about the new CD. Well, uh, this is the first Scottish CD that I've done in about three, three, four years. Uh, I, I, I did uh, Shamrock and Heather, which was a mixture of Irish and Scottish, as you know. Yep. Uh, a few years ago and then prior to that I did uh, Memories of Scotland which I recorded at uh, Phil Cunningham's studio and that was about 
or six years ago. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't uh, done any Scottish stuff. I'd been working in different fields. I've been doing albums for uh, dance companies. That's uh, people that do ballroom dancing. We should explain that you have a recording studio as well. Yes, that's right, yes. So you're a busy guy between all your uh, entertaining gigs around about and you're recording. That's a full-time thing. That's right. But I, I work in with a lot of different uh, types of music. But uh, obviously I love Scottish music, being being Scottish. And uh, my dad, he, he was a, a singer and a songwriter and, and I kind of learned my trade playing in his bands and uh, we were actually full-time on the boards for a a couple of years there and he used to do all the Scottish songs and that song that you just played The Legend of Scotland that's one that uh, he used to do regularly Mm -hmm. and it was an old David Kinnaird song from the very early 1960s but you don't hear it these days I was looking for material something a wee bit different that hadn't been done to death and uh, that was one of the songs I came up with. So talking about material without this new CD it's got what 15 tracks on it where where do you get the material from where do you get your inspiration from to to collect this uh, collage of songs and put them together and put them on a CD well some of it came from you Andy yes there's a few of them Um, the the Ghosts of Culloden I first heard that on your programme done by Isla Grant, obviously, who, who wrote it. It is a really great uh, song. I, uh, I'd never heard it before, and I was really kind of struck by it. But I wanted to do it a little bit different, so we did a kind of different arrangement. Um, and uh, Hannah Mary Graham, yep. which is uh, an instrumental on the album, uh, the pipe tune, uh, I first heard that on your programme as well. Oh, that's so, done. Uh, we, we do listen to what you play, and... Uh, you know, something. Sometimes you come up with something that uh, I haven't heard before. Well, it's a, it's a of huge. Of course, it was the piper Gavin Maxwell who who wrote that tune, yep. and he wrote it for his. I, I, I looked it all up, and he he wrote it for his daughter when she was christened. I think that's right. Well, it's it's such a privilege to sit here every week and just play just what you fancy, you know. And if people enjoy it as well, more power to the cause, you know. Right. So uh, we got talking to Hannah Mary Graham. This is a great tune that was composed by young uh, Gavin Maxwell down in the southwest of Scotland. And the tune, Hannah Mary Graham.
Kun Hannah, Mary Graham, by Scotland's own Ronnie Ross, and all the way from Scotland on the telephone from his home in Inverness, Ronnie Ross. How long did it take you to uh, learn that tune, Ronnie? Uh, I copied it down off your program and didn't have it on uh, record, so I, I, I play everything by ear mm -hmm. anyway, Andy. All the instruments on that track are played by me. Um, so I, I, first of all, sat down and just worked out section by section the tune. And being a pipe tune, it's actually quite complex in its, its, in its makeup. But uh, I really enjoy it. I think it's a, a fantastic uh, tune. I, I, I really like it. And I hadn't heard it before, so I, I was very pleased to go and record it. And, of course, it was done on the pipes on the one that I heard, so it really suits the accordion, I think. Well, it's a, it's a, he's a great young guy and a very, very great talent. And that when that uh, CD came out, and I got it in a year or two ago, that tune just jumped out at me, and I'm really glad you picked up on it and you enjoy it as much as I do because I had a lot of feedback on that specific track. People, are, you're not the only one that was asking what it was. Another another tune that you maybe picked up on was The Ghosts of Culloden. Well, Culloden's not that far from you, just down the road. Tell us about uh, The Ghosts of Culloden. Well, uh, the, the Ghosts of Culloden was another one that I picked up from, from your programme. Uh, I l love Isla Grant's work anyway, and I've, I've recorded an, a number of her songs over the years, and they, they kind of suit me because her uh, range is pretty much the same as, as mine. Yes. And um, it, it, the type of songs that she does, uh, I've always enjoyed them, whether it be the country ones or, or the Scottish ones, for that matter. There's a little this bit of... One, this one was new to me, and it kind of stuck out. And we're going to film a new uh, DVD next year because uh, the, the last one has been hugely successful. So we were looking for material that would fit on the DVD as well, you know, so uh, the, the songs and the tunes are, we're going to go to various places, uh, you know, Naver Bay, we're going to go up to Naver Bay and, and so on and so forth. The Waters of Kyleskew, we're going to go to Kyleskew, Sky in the Sky, we're going to go to Sky. But uh, we thought, well, Culloden's on the doorstep and it would be great to get permission to go to the battlefield and, and film around there for the, the, the video. So that was all part of it. Well, it's a pretty uh, eerie place, the Culloden. Now, they've got the new visitor centre open there. I've been there a couple of times. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? But it's such an eerie. And I always tell a funny story, but I try to explain to people about Culloden. And if you go to Culloden, and I'm sure you'll agree that it's phenomenal the way it's laid out and very, very well reconstructed in, in the visitor centre. But when you go out uh, onto the battlefield itself, it's a guy windswept place. And every time I've been there, you're just a bit blown off your feet. But what fascinates me is they've actually still got the humps of uh, where the bodies were buried and they've got the Rosses yeah. buried here and the McDonald's here and and the, uh, the, the certain amount the piles and uh, of the different clans and then a, a, bit, a few yards away it says the English so the English yeah. <laughs> so they've got all the Scottish clans uh, who are massacred at the battle in different graves and they've just got the English all lumped in together I'm, I'm going to make no comment on that because I'll, I'll, I'll probably end up on the wrong side of it. I play to a lot of English people week after week, so oh, well, we need I'm going to take the fifth. We need to educate them. Anyway, the, the Battle of Culloden, the last ba battle fought in the British mainland. It was indeed, 1745. Yeah. What, what you've got, you were talking about Isla Grant songs. What other Isla Grant songs do you have on this uh, CD? Uh, only one other. Uh, we've got one. We actually finished the album with a song called We'll Meet Again, My Friends which is it's not a Scottish song, but uh, we've kept the kind of feel of the album with accordion and mandolin and guitar and stuff like that. It, 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 it kind of fits in with, with the album anyway, although it's not a, a Scottish song. And uh, it kind of finishes things off because it is a, one of these end-of-the-night songs where, you know, you're saying, I we'll, hope we'll meet again and um, we we'll look forward to the next time that we... We see you. So that one's on it as well. So you were saying you, you, a lot of the Isla Grant songs work really well for you. Is this because you sort of, well, you were talking about the Thistle and the Shamrock CD you did. Is that because you kind of do some Irish stuff as well? And Isla Grant kind of has that Irish sort of Foster and Allen type Irish, a well, little uh, bit of an it, Irish flavour to it. Absolutely. Well, it would have an Irish flavour because her stuff was all recorded in Ireland. That's right. Um, she, she All her recording uh, 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 up until... I think the last one that was all done in in Ireland, 
uh, with Irish musicians. Um, and, of course, she's a big star over there. Oh. Uh, she's better known in Ireland than she is in Scotland. Yeah, platinum platinum albums galore in, in uh, Ireland. Absolutely. And I think it's uh, it's a bit of a shame that she hasn't been recognised until fairly recently in Scotland. Yeah, she's not so well known over here uh, as she is over there. She's a much bigger... And Australia, she's a big star over there too. That's right. Now, back to the ghosts of Culloden. Tell us about uh, Culloden. Yeah, well, uh, I, I tried to do it a little bit different and uh, uh, because uh, I don't want to copy somebody else's arrangements. So uh, we put the bagpipes on it and uh, the, the drums, uh, thinking of the battle, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the kind of uh, all the soldiers marching to, to war and uh, the wind blowing on the moor and we've tried to capture the atmosphere off the Battle of Culloden with the Ghosts of Culloden. So I, I hope I've done that. It kind of starts off with a, a fade-in, so uh, I think it, it works well. It fades in, it fades out. Uh, it, certainly, it certainly does, and we're just going to play it in a minute. But the, people have to understand that 700 men died in the first three minutes of the battle. It was just a massacre. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that uh, the, the, the song kind of captures the spirit of the thing. And, uh, you know saying that, that it'll always be remembered, which which it will, you know, we're, we're talking about it now, so it, it, is, it, it is still remembered, so well, we I shall... never want the like of that to happen again. Can you hear them? Can you see them marching proudly across the moor? Hear the wind blow through the drifting snow. Tell me, can you see them, the ghosts of Culloden? Can you hear them? Can you see them? Marching proudly across the moor. Hear the wind blow through the drifting snow. Tell me, can you see them? The ghosts of Many bravely fought And sadly they were slain But they died with such pride and dignity Their lives were not in vain We still remember them They fought to save their land and died for liberty. Can you hear them? Can you see them? Marching proudly across the moon. Hear the wind. Can you see them, the ghosts of Culloden? Through the mist you hear a lonely piper play. Listen carefully, you'll hear a mournful cry. Swords and bayonets crash. As man to man they clash They came to fight to live And now they die Can you hear them? Can you see them? Marching proudly Across the moon Can you see them, the ghosts of Culloden? Can you hear them? Can you see them? March. 
marching proudly across the moor. Hear the wind blow through the drifting snow. Tell me, can you see them, the ghosts of Culloden? Ronnie Ross and the Ghosts of Culloden. Great Isle of Grant song from the battlefield uh, up there, not that far away from Inverness. And on the phone from Scotland, we have Ronnie Ross. How long did it take you to put that uh, track down? Uh, it, it took quite a while, um, Andy. It, it, with, with the whole album, uh, I suppose I must have spent six or eight months off and on because it starts off with the ideas and getting the material together and then doing arrangements and then actually recording it and producing it um, and and bringing in the other music- musicians to play along with the bits that I've already played and so on and so forth. So it's like building up a big jigsaw puzzle, if you like, you know, because mm-hmm. they, they all come in separately. So the, the drummer came in separately and the the, uh, the piper was recorded separately and, and so on and so forth. So it's like building up a jigsaw puzzle. So you having your own studio and being an yep. artist, recording your own stuff, putting down all the tracks, are you a bit of a perfectionist to get it absolutely right? Well, in my young day, you know, I was telling you about my father. My father was a very good singer. Yeah. Very well known in this area, songwriter, and uh, he was a much better singer than I am. And I, I started off playing in his band when I was 11 years old. But we made uh, three LP records, and they were all grim, every one of them. And they were all done in the space of an afternoon and they were they were not done in proper recording studios they were done with portable equipment by bbc guys or whatever he could get hold of at the time and there was no production to speak of Uh, on a couple of them there's not even a bass you know it's uh, drums guitar accordion and vocals and when you listen back all the mistakes are there you know so i i've gone the opposite way now i always swore that uh, if i did stuff myself i would really do the absolute best, spend as much time, as much money, and uh, as much effort on it, so that because it's there forever, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't want to have something that somebody listens to five, ten, twenty years down the line, or when I'm gone, and goes, "What a heap of rubbish that was," you know. So when my kids play it, I hope that they'll go well. You know, my old dad wasn't too bad. Well, I think the proof of the puddings in the eating. But this is a, this is a great CD. Now, where uh, can people find the CD for sale? Tell us about your website. Um, well, my website's. Uh, RonnieRoss.co.uk, and uh, they can get it through the website by getting in, in touch with me. Uh, but the CD will also be available on uh, Music Scotland, which is the, the big website, and Amazon. They usually put it onto Amazon, mm-hmm. uh, and it's available locally in, in uh, HMV, Inverness, and you know, in the, the in the local shops around this area. But uh, they should be able to get it through through Music Scotland or on the internet that way, or just direct from me. So the title of the CD is called The Land That I Love, the 15 tracks on it. Now, some of them uh, you've composed yourself. Now, we're, as a segue into this next one, it's called The Rose of the Highlands. Tell us about this great song. Well, uh, I was ill. Uh, I'd actually uh, cracked my ribs and uh, got a chest infection at the same time and couldn't sleep. And uh, I, I, I was lying in bed uh, at three o'clock in the morning. I, I, I'd been in bed since midnight or whatever. Couldn't sleep at all, and my, my head was racing. But uh, uh, I thought, well, I've, I've got to do something here. Get up and stop disturbing my wife because I was tossing and turning. So I got up and uh, I had the the German idea. I just had the title, Rose of the Highlands. But what I was thinking about was I have friends who who work in the oil business. And uh, they work abroad, and they're away for months at a time sometimes, you know, from their family. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking how it would feel if I was away from my family, well, my wife in particular, uh, for, for months at a time, and then just coming home for a short period, you know, how it would feel if I was away for two or three months just to work. And so that's what the song's about, really. That's the gist of it, is somebody that's uh, had to go away from his, from his wife and and, and work abroad, but uh, was wishing he was back home in Scotland with, a, you know, with his loved one. She's my 
my rose of the highlands, flower of the glen, and my heart is longing to see her once again. Wherever I wander, wherever I may roam, my rose of the highlands is calling me back home. Looking for a better life, I've traveled far from home. The work is hard, the hours are long, and I feel so all alone. Her voice is calling on the wind across the ocean's foam. My rose of the highlands is calling me back home. She's my rose of the highlands. Flower of the glen, and my heart is longing to see her once again. Wherever I wander, wherever I may roam, my rose of the highlands is calling me back. Night is made for dreaming. My dreams of home are strong. The light of love is calling me back where I belong. In memory, tears are falling. Our parting brings such pain. But rose of the highlands. I'll soon be home again. She's my rose of the highlands, flower of the glen, and my heart is longing to see her once again. Wherever I wander, wherever. I may roam. My rose of the highlands is calling me back home. She's my rose of the highlands, flower of the glen. My heart is longing to see her once again. Wherever I wander, wherever I may roam, my rose of the highlands is calling me back home. Yes, my rose of the highlands is calling. Rose of the Highlands from Ronnie Ross and an original song sung by the man himself, Ronnie Ross. Uh, that's a great song, Ronnie. Where do you get the inspiration? Where do you get the inspiration to write songs in, in, in general? You're always looking for ideas. I, I, I've written a few recently. Uh, I, I wrote one for the previous uh, album to this, but it was a tango called the Tango of Romance. Um, and the reason I wrote I wrote it to order because I couldn't find a, a song. To do a tango, and it was for a dancing album. Uh, on this particular CD, I, I also wrote a tune. Uh, one of the instrumentals is called Stuart's Golden Ears, and that was for my brother. And uh, he's the guy that comes into the studio when I have any sound problems or technical problems. He comes in and he's always able to help. And we call him Golden Ears because he can hear things that 
other people can't hear. So that was the inspiration for the. So you're, you, you know, the, it comes from various areas. The, the, the series quite varying. It's all different types. You got uh, the Crags of Tumble Down Mountain on here. Tell us about that track. Well, I I I love that tune anyway, and uh, I heard um, uh, was it Stan Hamilton's band doing doing this particular tune where they did it with a slow start and then went into a march. But when they did the march part, they did it really really fast, and I felt it was a bit too fast to be honest. And they finished with it fast. But I I was thinking of the battle where, you, you know, you, you, the eerie part at the beginning was, was the battle begin at the start of the, the conflict. And yeah. then the march part would be the, um, the actual battle and then a slow bit at the end, which was the aftermath. So that's how that came about. And uh, I, I love that track. It's a great track. I should explain this battle was the Battle of Tumbledown Mountain, fought in the Falkland, was, Isl- yeah. fought in the Falkland Islands way back in Falkland, 1980, yeah. 1982. Uh, and t- there's another track on here that really intrigued me and I think it's really great. I'm Not a Candle in the Wind. Yeah, uh, that, that's a, a Bobby Bear song, uh, an old country and western song. And again, uh, another song that I love. Uh, and I, I put that aside years ago, waiting for a, an opportunity to come along to record it, just to find the right album where it would, would sit in, in its place. And um, it, it's just a lovely song. If you want to play that one, you fire away. Oh, well, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll probably we'll play that next week. We don't want to play it all your stuff this all right. week. <laughs> and then we'd have to give it a rest for a while. So we'll try and, okay. try and take, it, try and take your uh, cover the whole CD over a few weeks. Now, another track it's on here is a Kenneth McKellar song, The West Highland Way, a great single yeah. song. I, 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 I had never heard that song. Till I, I, I think it was, it was either uh, your program. I think it was Andy Ross, his program. Somebody played it anyway, Kenneth McKellar. And uh, I I hadn't heard it, and I thought well, that's a catchy song, you know, and it was just so different. And again, uh, thinking of the DVD that we're going to go out and film this year, uh, it gives me an opportunity to go down Fort William Way and and south of that, and um, film around what is the West Highland Way, the 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 walk that they do. So um, I thought it was a very catchy song, and that was written by Kenneth McKellar himself. That's right, and I think uh, he must have wrote another one when he was walking the West Highland Way. It was the Midges. Remember he wrote the Midges the song? Midges. <laughs> I'm no good at Kidges. I'm no good at Kidges, aye, the Midges. Yeah. Well, it's been wonderful talking to you, Ronnie. Tell us again the, the uh, your website and how to get a hold of you and all that good stuff. Right, well, the, the website is www.ronnieross, that's all one word, R-O-N-N-I-E-R-O-S-S, dot co dot uk there's direct contacts on there they can email me or uh, the phone number's on there as well so anybody that wants to get in touch can get in touch that way so the t- title track on the cd is called the land that i love we well, got that lined up to play tell us about this track well uh, uh, this is a song that i i found um, on, on an album by an irish artist called tr dallas and he's actually his real name is tom allen and he's the brother of uh, the the fellow Alan and Foster and Alan, and uh, he he did this song, and it's actually an Irish song, but by changing one word, Scotland to Ireland, because that's the all the only difference. It, it just it fits as a Scottish song, or it could be a song from any country, you know, the, the land that you love, but uh, as, uh, it just has a Scottish feel about it, and um, I thought right. Okay, they're always doing that to us. If you listen to the Irish version of "These Are My Mountains" and several other yeah. Scottish songs, they've changed the words a little bit to be Ireland instead of Scotland, and uh, changed you know "loch" to "lake" or or whatever suits them. That's right. Good music's good music. Doesn't matter. Uh, absolutely. And I thought it was just a great song, so uh, I checked with the the guy that wrote it, and uh, everything was fine. So we went ahead and and just recorded it by changing. The, the one Ireland, the Scotland, and uh, I think it works really well as a Scottish song. Well, I think it does too, and it's very aptly titled The Land That I Love. That's why we do the Sounds of Scotland show. Well, Ronnie, thanks for staying up late tonight and having a chat with us on the show, and continued success uh, with your recording studio and your recording. And with this great CD, that's Ronnie Ross. His CD is entitled The Land That I Love. Here's the track. Thanks for coming on, Ronnie. Stay thanks on the for line your support, Andy. Oh, All you're day. very welcome. You stay on the line, I'll have a chat with you. All right, take care. <laughs> As I stand on the hillside 
and look all around. I'm amazed at the beauty I see. The wild purple heather that blows in the wind, and the touch of a cool evening breeze. Oh, how green is the valley! How blue is the stream that flows from the hills high above? Then I think to myself, Oh, how lucky I am to be back in the land that I love. Then I sit for a while. And I ponder as I think of the years gone by since I first left my home for a strange land to roam far away from this paradise. Oh, how green is the valley! How blue is the stream that flows from the hills high above? Then I think to myself, Oh, how lucky I am to be back in the land that I love. No more I will wander. No more will I roam away from this land I call home. With its locks and its mountains, its rivers and streams, not the like through this world I have seen. How green is my Scotland? How blue is the stream that flows from the hills high above? Then I think to myself, Oh, how lucky I am to be back in the land that I love. To be back in the land that I love. This is Andy Mike for the Sounds of Scotland. Well, thanks for joining me for the last couple of hours. I hope you've had as much fun as I've had, and I've left you just a little cheerier than I found you. Till the next time, at the same time, same place next week. Take care. God bless and bye for now.